Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I've i got a, a wild question in the end to ask you, but uh, in the meantime, let me just go some business here. We started off this program with a $300 million grant in 1980. Is that correct? That's okay. And how much? 94 uh, was actually when that was made. Okay, so. Um, okay, I thought that you said you said it was 1980. How much then? Okay, so from 1994 was the first major expenditure of 300 million dollars. Uh, that was when we went to the phase of actually constructing LIGO. But these earlier dates, where we're talking about funding research starting in 1979, had to do with a lot of uh, a lot of demonstrations of both technology and science. For example, people built tabletop laser interferometers to start to show that they could reach the kinds of sensitivities. There was a chance to get there. My colleagues here can, can tell that story in some detail, but, the, uh, but that early, this is a pattern that we often follow. We start out funding folks who lay the groundwork, and then the community gets together, again, as my colleagues said, and makes a compelling argument based on that early theory and experiment. Okay. So um, from those early experiments till now, how much are we talking about that's been spent on the project? We have spent a total of a, over a billion dollars, $1.1 billion. About $450 million of that went into actually constructing initial and advanced LIGO. The rest has supported operations and maintenance of the observatories, right. as well as individual investigators that were doing that early kind of work and the laboratory work I'm talking about. And how much uh, have our, we talked about the, the, everybody's working together and many different uh, countries have contributed. How much have they contributed to this effort? Uh, David, I'm, why don't you comment? So, so Japan's, got started with a, a detector in um, in the uh, 90s and they're building a big one I think their number and I'm not I'm not don't quote me on this but I think it's on the order of 250 million but they're well behind us I mean the, the Japanese you say that's the Japanese detector uh, uh, the the Italian Virgo detector I think they're in they're, the way they do their accounting is a little bit different because they don't cost their people in it. So it's, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but probably they have spent about $200 million, not including the people that they've, they've put into it. Was it co co foreign contributions to our Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe I misunderstood the question. Foreign contributions to advanced LIGO. Uh, David Shoemaker might be able to yeah, answer let, that question. Let, let me speak to that. Um, the NSF did fund us for a program to build advanced LIGO detectors at $205 million, but then of their own free will, um, the German Max Planck Society, the STFC in the UK, and also ARC in Australia all made contributions with a total value of some $17 million just because they wanted to be part of the experiment. They would have had access to the data. They would have enjoyed the profits of it. They wanted to be part of this activity. Uh, so would it be fair to say we've spent about half the money that was necessary for the project and uh, to be successful as you are today and uh, um, the rest of the world spent half of that? Uh, been no, uh, our, our, our fractional contribution is much larger than that, but yeah. uh, in, as far as getting to the point of this observation, it is sort of 20 million uh, versus 450 million of construction cost. But uh, David was making, uh, Dr. Reitz was making a, a, an important point. Other uh, nations are, are mounting large gravitational uh, wave detection elements, and we were working in concert with those. So mm -hmm. the, if you wanted to add up all of that, the money going into CAGRA, the money that's going into Virgo, that becomes a much bigger number. But as far as the U.S. investment in these instruments, it's uh, uh, about what I said. Well, I appreciate, uh, I've always uh, supported uh, uh, basically uh, research when we're looking out, because I've been told that if we're looking out to outer space that we actually can determine what's going on in the molecular structures that can have impact, major impacts here. And sometimes it's easier to see it out there than it is to see it through your little uh, microscopes. Tele telescopes and microscopes are actually very related from what I was first educated when I first came here. So I've tried to be supportive of, of both efforts. Um, now let me ask a little 
I know this, Mr. Chairman, just one quickly. First of all, we're talking about waves, and I'm, I'm a surfer, of course, and I want to find out about riding waves. <laughs> but uh, will this discovery that you were talking about today make time travel any more, I mean, this is one thing I've been hearing about, it'll make it, it'll make it any more likely. Uh, <laughs> Beam him up, Scotty. <laughs> We wish. <laughs> this actually does show distortions of space-time. So it's, we measure it as distortions of distance, but it is distortion of time. We can see time uh, traveling faster and slower, but it cannot make us travel in time. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Warbacher.